helping make your life easier. Moms Every Day. Hey everybody, it's Hattie Cheek with Moms Every Day. Today we have Dr. Nadine Buscave with us today from Cabell Huntington Hospital talking about cervical cancer and, and trying to bring awareness to the problem and, and how it really can be prevented. Cervical cancer can be prevented. Absolutely, Hattie, and that's why we're here today, and I would like to thank you and thank the station, first of all, mm -hmm. for allowing us to come in the, during this month. And as you know, this is January, the Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Right. And, um, and I would really, really want to kind of hopefully get to certain points to our, our community to kind of let that, them know that this is a preventable, preventable cancer. So first things first, what causes it? So basically, for the most part, uh, cervical cancer is caused by a viral infection. It's, um, it's a virus called the human papillomavirus, or HPV. Mm -hmm. There are several strains of this virus. Um, luckily, not all of them would cause cancer, but the high-risk subtypes of the cancer would cause cancer. And then uh, that's why it's really important to kind of keep up with the regular appointments with your gynecologist, because some of these infections are, are asymptomatic. They won't cause any problem. Right. 80% of the population gets HPV so it's, it's very common it's the most common STD it's the most common in women and by the age of 40 as you said more than 80 percent of the women have already contacted HPV mm -hmm. luckily most of these um, women and patients will, will clear the infection without any problems but some could remain and persist and it could, could cause to a pre-malignant or a malignant condition right and that's the part that comes in the, the serious parts of HPV can be prevented at a young age as long as you take those precautions. That's right. It's um, nowadays, um, as you know, it's what's well known, it's more known now in the community that there is a vaccine that, mm -hmm. you know, it's recommended for girls between the age of 9 and 26 that, you know, people could get and then hopefully prevent the occurrence of cervical cancer and or pre-malignant condition that could lead to cervical cancer. And um, let alone um, the the importance, again, for a regular routine checkup. So even somebody who's been vaccinated that doesn't um, preclude and doesn't kind of avoid the need mm -hmm. for a regular routine GYN exam on a, on, a, on a yearly basis at least to make sure that um, all the GYN health and including the cervical health is within normal limits. Right. So ladies, make sure that you're going to the gynecologist for your annual visit. So when it comes to the signs and the symptoms, though, what are they? For the most part, the early stage of cervical cancer is, could be totally asymptomatic and patients could have um, like a stage one disease without even noticing it. Right, which is the scary part. And that's again the importance of a routine annual exactly. visit and then that's when a pap smear or a pap test would be necessary mm -hmm. to kind of screen for it and then make the diagnosis further. Um, but when, 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 the, when the stage is a little more advanced, patients could start having some pain, some bleeding, some abnormal discharge, some discomfort in general. And then the most important thing is, is bleeding after intercourse. And that's usually a, a really worrisome sign that we need to kind of check and see what's really going mm -hmm. on. Okay, so that's the point where you do need to definitely go to the doctor. And when it comes to the risk factors, we, we kind of touched on this, but really, who's most at risk? Basically, anybody who's at most risk for contacting HPV is at risk for developing cervical cancer. So people with multiple sexual partners, people who's um, been exposed to HPV multiple different times with like history of abnormal pap smears in the past, mm -hmm. or patients who do have a low immunity so they can't clear a viral infection that easily. Mm -hmm. uh, either whether they're taking some drugs that could kind of lower their immunity or they have a disease problem that kind of also uh, affects their immunity. The other major important thing as well as a risk, as a major risk factor for cervical cancer is smoking. Smoking is a very well known factor for risk factor for so many cancers including right. lung cancer but also cervical cancer is one of them. It's one of those things that just blows your mind because you would think it would have absolutely nothing to do with it but it does. Absolutely, absolutely and then studies have linked smoking, strongly linked smoking to cervical cancer mainly because of the fact that the maybe the immunity is changed around the cervix.
for patients who are like heavily smokers, and then that could as well lead to a persistent HPV infection around the cervix that eventually, God forbid, could lead to cervical cancer. Right, and cervical cancer, it, obviously no one, no one wants to have it. It can be prevented, it can be painful, but it also can be treated. Absolutely, absolutely. And the treatment for cervical cancer, Hattie, depends on the stage. Okay. So the earlier we catch a cervical cancer, the easier the treatment will be. The more advanced the cervical cancer, um, the more complicated and complex the treatment will be. And there. having to go through procedures and things like that, life-altering decisions. So definitely just the main reason why you should always be going to your provider, checking in on those regular checkups. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. If you need any more info, just head to our website, WSAZ.com. Click on that Moms Every Day tab and rewatch the interview. Have a good day.